This episode of Taproom Travelers is brought to you by Pep's Draft House Pizza. My name is Sarah, and my title is Creative Director and Co-Owner. My name is Rob Miller. I'm the owner and head brewer here at Dangerous Man. So how we got started? After I moved back to Minneapolis, moving from Montana, bought a house here with Sarah, and we were had our first child, and I didn't have a lot of hobbies, so I you know, wanted to start dabbling into something that would consume more of my time outside of work. Rob was an avid home brewer for eight, ten years. Really obsessive, actually. We had kind of tried out a couple different models. One of them was a CSB, so a community supported beer, very similar to a CSA. So behind the scenes, we were bottling up beer. We had shares that we were selling to friends, and then we would drive around on Sundays with the kids in the car and deliver beer. And we had a list of 30 people deep on our waiting list. So that was kind of us testing the market, like would people pay for Rob's beer? And the answer was absolutely yes. Developed the chocolate milk stout. That was kind of my first recipe that I was like, oh, this is really good. I want to recreate this again, try to duplicate it, do the same thing again. And then after a few times really dialing in that recipe, I was super confident. Like, this, this is my beer. It really moved from him just being this home brewer into his beer was financially in demand. That was kind of setting us on this track. Then we started writing a business plan for Dangerous Man, and um, we decided to go for it. The name is from a time when Rob and I were down in Austin, Texas at a friend's wedding. We had all had a really great time the night before and all the kids were eating cereal in the morning in front of the TV and Rob came out of the bedroom with, you know, hair all the wild and one of the girls jumped off the couch and ran to the kitchen and grabbed her mom and was like, Mom, there's a dangerous man in our house. So then that whole weekend, we called him the dangerous man because if you actually get to know Rob, he's probably the least dangerous person in the world. I love my beard. It gives me warmth, a layer of warmth in the winter. The logo is from a picture taken that same weekend. So the two kind of tie together. Rob and I knew we wanted to be in Northeast. We kind of had boundaries laid out on the map. Weekends, we would put the kids in the car and we would just drive around and we would just look at buildings and call people and see if buildings were available. And we drove by this place and there was a sign that said, you know, for lease. So he came in, looked at it, he walked out and came in the car and he was like, that's it, this is the place. And I was like, really? It was originally the Northeast Bank building. In the corner over there was the president of the bank's office. So we kind of kept that little room intact somewhat. All the doors used for the bathrooms are the are original doors from, from this space. So we tried to kind of bring some things in. We, of course, wanted to leave the pillars and keep those really highlighted. The bar top here was pulled out of an old building over on Hennepin. So that was kind of fun to be able to find the, the Douglas fir and have this kind of be a part of our bar. And then we had a lot of artists just lend their time and talent to the space. But we decided to add a whole production area over there. And then in addition to that, we added a growler shop onto the front of that space. And this is our Dangerous Man growler shop. We opened it in November of 2015, so it's, it's very new. We opened it because in the tap room, the tap room was so busy, we couldn't fill anyone's growler on site. So we opened the growler shop, and that is the space where people can bring in their own growlers. We also fill crowlers, which are 750 milliliter cans. We fill those ahead of time and have a full cooler stock to those. 
And it's actually fun from, you know, starting at five in the morning, right? The brewers are here. It's very much kind of a, a manufacturing place. You know, there's tons of work being done and beer being brewed, and it feels very much like a little tiny manufacturing plant. And then during the day, we do a bunch of the production of the crawlers and filling growlers and getting the space all ready. And then, you know, the daytime vibe in here is, it's pretty public house. It's, we get a lot of kids in here. We encourage families to come in. We have non-beer options. We have games. That was something that Rob and I really wanted as part of this, much more of kind of that European feel where it's, I can come in and have a beer with my kid and go home and that's, that's okay. It's that healthy drinking relationship. Then we move into nighttime, nightlife here and that's definitely a different feel. It's busy and exciting and fun and staff is amazing and we had no intention of any of that. This equipment that I'm sitting next to here, I found used on the internet. So all this is really hasn't changed in the three years we've been here. The system is awesome. It's really manual. We stir it all, the mash in by hand. We dump grain bags in by hand. Yeah, it's just an amazing system. It works really well. It's super simple. It's a 10 barrel mash ton and 10 barrel kettle. And then we have four 10 barrel fermenters on this side four 10 barrel fermenters on the other side and two 20 barrel fermenters on the other side as well. The beers we are best known for here are the chocolate milk stout and the peanut butter porter. The chocolate milk stout we opened with as an unofficial flagship because all the beers here do rotate so frequently. We weren't locked into having one flagship, but we quickly found out that that was the beer people were talking about the most, most excited about. We do add a heavy amount of chocolate to the finished beer in the bright tank. And I experimented throughout homebrewing different ways to add the chocolate, different methods, different nibs, different varieties of chocolate powders, baking powder, until I, I discovered what worked best for me. And I was able to get that ingredient on a professional level. And it's more of like an essence of chocolate. Later we released the peanut butter porter and that has taken off, it is by far the most popular beer we make. Really had never home brewed with peanut butter before. This was all kind of a new experience of trying to grow our recipes and give people some crazy creative styles that I thought would be fun to try. It's loosely based on our chocolate recipe. We just kind of replaced the chocolate with the peanut butter and did a couple experiments and it's like, whoa, this is, this is crazy. It's just fun to see how that kind of just happened overnight. Now the new challenge is what's the next one? Now with this expansion, we're able to do some lagering. Just did a Pilsner over here, really excited about that. Did a Bach that's lagering right now. And then we have a lot of plans to increase our sour program. And then our barrel age program is gonna really expand this year. We have a lot more barrels. We have more tank space to put, let beers age in the tanks. We have a lot more space in the basement for more barrels. We just bought a bunch more barrels and we're filling them up as fast as we can. Love to get some barrel aged beers consistently on tap. A lot of these are new. I've challenged my brewers to be like, let's go, let's design some really crazy recipes that are awesome, that are creative, that are gonna, you know, blow people's minds. The brewing community in Minnesota in general is growing. Definitely we're seeing kind of this, a little vortex hub in Northeast. We are such an integral part of that. And it's a really fun piece to be a part of. There's so much give and take. There's so much support. Advice for home brewers I would give them is experiment and brew and brew and brew. Ask questions, reach out to local brewers, ask for advice, bring local brewers samples. I love when home brewers bring me beer and you know, they ask me to critique it and I'll give them feedback. Experimenting as much ingredients as possible, I think I dissected all the grains I could, all the hops I could, all the yeast I did side by side comparisons. Of what do I like about this? What don't I like? Getting here and having that experience, I was able to design recipes that I was confident in. It didn't slow me down at all. Knowing the ingredients, knowing the process, you know, that goes a long way. Rob and I really love it. Rob loves waking up at five in the morning every day and brewing. If he could brew every day of his life and then go home and nap and be with the kids after, I mean, he's really, he is so happy brewing beer. Trying to make the best beer in Minnesota, challenge other breweries to hold them to that same level of quality. I think Minnesota's growing, the beer scene is blowing up. We want to help educate customers, other breweries, whatever we can do to help breweries make better beer. We plan to just kind of do our thing here for a couple years. Sarah and I 
have some dreams maybe down the road, potential uh, growth options for Dangerous Man, but right now we're just gonna stay right here in Minneapolis doing what we do. Thanks for watching Taproom Travelers and learning a little bit more about Dangerous Man. Come on down and we'll fill your growler or your pint glass. Thanks a lot for coming today, guys. Hope you enjoyed your stay at Dangerous Man and hope to see you guys back. Hi, if you like what we do here, you can click up above where we have t-shirts and other merchandise for sale. You can also show your support by subscribing or liking the video. You can also click down there where we have our next episode. I'm going to shut up right now for a word from my sponsors. Pep's Draft House Pizza is made with the highest quality ingredients just like your favorite craft beers. We recommend the Taproom Double with double sausage and double pepperoni and enough cheese to hold it all together. Look for Pep's Draft House Pizza at Woodman's, Lund's and Byerly's, Festival Foods and a number of other great grocery stores. Because what pairs better with a great beer than an even better pizza? And you can click this for bonus content.